Now, when the term King 3 is mentioned, most recall its importance in regards to how companies need to manage their corporate governance. Yet, Chapter 5 of the latest King report, which deals with information technology, seems to be receiving a less attention than the report's eight other principles. What does Chapter 5 truly mean for business? Joining me in studio to share his insights is Craig Tablanche, Managing Director of CXO Advisor. Craig, welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, as mentioned in my intro, when it comes to King 3, a lot of emphasis is placed on things like ethical leadership, internal auditing, stakeholder accountability, mm. but we rarely hear the mention of Chapter 5. Mm. Is this a reality you deal with when dealing with companies and with directors and board members? Yeah. Natasha, what we're finding is that many boards are actually in denial and they're kind of ignoring Chapter 5. And I think this is because traditionally the, the technologists have befuddled the boards and confused them in, in, in many ways and um, not spoken to them in a language that they understand. You know, the, the language of boards and of business is really finance. So if you can talk to the board in a simple financial terms around Chapter 5, and Chapter 5 talks quite heavily about the investment in IT and the effect of that investment. So if you can talk in that way, you can get a different result and reaction from the board. But is it sometimes not a case of the board relies on their CIOs and their IT departments perhaps too much when it comes to this part of the King Report? It, that is the case and um, th I think that's one of the reasons that King 3 says you need independent assurance so that you can be sure that the technology rabbit holes or traditional decisions that your IT department has made around technology are not actually inhibiting you, but creating the opportunity for you to align to your strategy and leverage technology for business sake rather than technology sake. Okay, can you give us an overview of some of the highlights of what Chapter 5 actually entails? Well, it, it covers the traditional things of the auditing and the governance process around how you manage IT. And that's where people have tended to focus. But where it goes further is really in saying what is the effect of the investment in IT? And how does the board provide leadership and direction to IT to support business more effectively and to really align to business? Alignment has become a bit of a cliche, um, but uh, you know, being buzzword compliant doesn't actually solve the problem. You really need to um, understand that the effect of the spend that you have in IT uh, is actually supporting your business strategy and objectives. And that goes to your IT intensity. So what type of industry are you in? What type of business are you running? And how in intensely do you need technology to support the business imperatives that you're driving uh, in the market or in the environment that you're operating in? So. Um, IT intensity is an important factor in, in, in understanding the, the extent to which you really need a, a technology-led strategy or a technology to support your strategy. Are board members understanding that IT and technology is more than just about the technology, it's actually about the, the business results. Is this making sense for my company? Yeah, I think, uh, again, because of the, the language not being a business language and not put it, uh, technologists not putting it in simple terms and CIOs often being poor communicators because they're technologists, um, not translating into business terms what the board is looking for, uh, there's this disconnect. Okay? And, and if you can get the communication right, I think that's the first step to really making a difference in terms of Chapter 5. Now, apart from understanding the principles, what are some of the other biggest misconceptions about what Chapter 5 stands for? Um, the apply or explain part of, of King 3, I think, has given people an out. So they, they're kind of saying, oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll explain. The trouble with that is if you're communicating poorly in the first place and then you choose not to ex or you choose not to apply something and you explain it away, how do you know, how does the board know that uh, you're explaining about the right things or applying on the right things? So apply or explain is a, is a, is a, is a problem as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's obviously also a, a huge um, issue around the, the clauses that refer to information assets. So um, your technology assets, I think, are fairly well understood because they're tangible and they're physical. But information assets, of course, are less tangible and therefore more difficult to govern and manage. Okay? 
So that's, a, that's an area that needs attention for, uh, in many cases. Now, from your perspective, when do companies like yourself step in uh, to maybe assist this language or a barrier between mm. the board members and, and the CIOs? We off, well, uh, we're stepping in mostly around the question of, the question that's often asked is how much should we spend on IT? And of course the answer is it depends. So what are you spending, where, how and why? At what time, for what reason? And what is the effect of that spend? What is the outcome that you're looking for? Um, technology people tend to be output people, but actually boards are looking for outcomes. So how do you link the outcomes that you're looking for to the spend and your plan spend and your uh, financial plan for, for the technology spend? And how do you do that? How do you link the two? Well, um, I mentioned IT intensity. So we link the IT intensity to what we call the business momentum. So what is the level of business momentum for your industry that is appropriate? And that is the first kind of baseline of the spend. And then you need spend for regulation, things like King 3 itself. Uh, and that is what we call must do spend, which also supports your business momentum. But beyond that, they spend to service your engine, for example, okay, which, is w which we call above the line spend. So we've got a model that takes you all the way to the leadership imperatives of the spend that helps boards to make uh, business decisions around where the spend is happening and why it's happening. Craig Blanche, MD of uh, CXO Advisor, thank you very much. You're most welcome.